Warriors United! Back with another episode of Vega Warriors 2 in the 1% Club. Hope you guys are doing well. Hope you guys are on your purpose. Hope you guys are continuing to conquest yourselves and conquest everything around you because you have dominion. You have to be the strong one. You have to be the one that says, I am going to control myself. And thereby controlling yourself, you control everything else around you. All right, so we are going to do a live stream a week from today at 6 o'clock. So on Tuesday night, we'll try to do it. And I uh, hope you guys uh, can join us for that. And I'll answer whatever questions. We can talk about whatever topics you want to. Dealing with self-control, retention, all those type of things. So next Tuesday, this will be Central Time, 6 o'clock Central Time. And uh, we'll kind of do it that way. It'll be 7 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time, I think it is. Maybe I'm wrong about that. But it's 6 o'clock, I think an hour back. 7 o'clock uh, uh, Eastern Time. So, all right. Now, so let's do some shout-outs here before we get to our topic. Uh, Raphael C uh, Catano, thank you. Two of them, my friend. I appreciate that. Geo to Genius, thank you. Uh, D-Rebel X, thank you, my friend. Official brother, Boldly Music, uh, of course, an old-timer. Thank you so much. Tony K uh, KD, thank you. John Jennings, thank you. Ray Vasquez, uh, 165 days. Keep it up, Ray. Great job. Gino Genus twice, thank you. Harry, uh, what pandemic? Yeah, that's a good point. I like that. That was great. Uh, Jonathan Sanchez, thank you. Uh, Don, uh, Dr. Von Lice Investing, thank you. John the Dawn, thank you. P. Altery, thank you. Mr. Ace, thank you. Uh, Paolo, thank you. Uh, Hamza CD, thank you. Uh, Spiritus, thank you. Shiva Joy, thank you. Um, Boss Mystic, Boss Mystic, thank you. And Mr. Ace, thank you. Perfect World Club. Now here it says day 64. I'm sure you're past that. Both and so so is Ray. Uh, but keep up the great work, my friends. Frederick Gray, thank you. Um, Sir Giggles, thank you. Isma Isma Sanchez, thank you. And Israel Yuda, uh, a, a longtime listener, thank you and viewer. I appreciate that. All right, so two minutes and 15 seconds. Let's talk about this one. Let's say this, and you are like a magnet under seam retention. Uh, this comes from Alfonso Perez, thank you. And uh, uh, he likes talk, talking about the attraction we get from seam retention. So let's talk about why this happens. And I think we've had a few, a few different videos like this, but I wanna kinda of go back over this because a lot of times people may not understand exactly why we get the attraction level. And it took a lot of long time for me to understand this as well. So I'm kinda of trying to kinda of go through some stages here and kinda of talk about it a little bit and kinda of try to explain a little bit of why this is so important for us to look at. So let's take a step back a little bit and Look at who we are. We are made of energy. Atoms, we're made of neutrons, electrons, all kinds of stuff within our system because of all the different things that make up the human body, whether it's oxygen, hydrogen, whatever it might be. So we have a lot of things within ourselves. Now, God has given us all those to be able to make us the type of person in his image to try to be the best person we can become the most high value male and female we can become and trying to achieve his purpose. So the idea that we have to go through is basically kind of say, we should, in theory, keep everything that we have inside of us, <laughs> right? That makes sense. And, and so that's something that in the back of our mind, we should think makes sense logically. Whatever God has given us, we should not be putting out there. Now, you can make the argument, well, you know, it should be everything. We should be releasing things at times. And I think this is the argument a lot of people have out there right now. But when you really look at things, God, if you trust God enough and your creator enough, you don't need to go ahead and think, well, I got to release things. I got to do all this kind of stuff to make myself healthy. But that happens because the society we're in right now, a lot of people don't believe in God. They don't believe in their creator. And so they're believing basically that science is correct when they say you have to release four or five times, get this energy out of there, and you'll build enough energy over time, you'll be fine, right? But we can see that that doesn't happen. And this goes back to studies and things been done back in the 1800s, 1850s, 1900s, talking about all the negative effects people have when they release. Now, 
you know, you don't always have to make a direct comparison. A lot of science can't do that, or maybe they don't want to do that. Basic kind of attributing this to all other kind of diseases. But when you think about this, it just makes perfect sense, logically, that if you're sitting there <clears throat> and you're releasing your energy, you're basically giving up a big part of your body, a big part of who you are. So you're not going to be at full strength. It can look like a, uh, a National Hockey League game where you got a penalty and you're, instead of six people out there, you have five people. You're not at full strength. And that's the same kind of analogy. You're not at full strength there. Every time you're releasing, you're losing a little bit of your strength. And so when you take a look at this idea that Alfonso's talking about, and he's exactly correct. If you keep all this energy you have, you become a normal person under God. Now, why is this attractive like a magnet? Well, interesting enough, because most people don't do this. I mean, 99% of the people in the world we're talking about are still releasing who knows how many times a day, right? You are basically uh, an abnormal type of entity. You're going to glow. Now, back, back at maybe a little bit past history, you probably had more people than 1% and probably it wasn't as noticeable, though people will still notice it because what it is is that you are keeping all that energy inside of you. And they'll notice that something is different about you. And that draws them to you because they want to know what this is that's making you special. Now, we're not talking about personality, even though that comes out with a lot of the benefits of retention. You're more charismatic, more confident. All these things can happen because you're, you're holding your energy inside and transmuting it to other types of part of your body and other things you're doing. That's going to be highly attractive in a lot of different ways. But what the attraction is and what they're noticing is an energy, an aura, whatever you want to call it around you, that attracts people to you like a magnet. And those people who sense that they have some of that themselves or they want some of that, they want to be around you, they will hang around you and they will find you out. That's why when we look at this situation, we can tell when people get drained of energy, people don't want to be around them. But those people who are uh, always doing things, who have this energy, who have this attention, they don't lack for any companionship, any, any friends or anything like that. They're really kind of saying more, let me give you my, my, some time off. Let me, give, me get away a little bit. And that's what I'm kind of doing. I'm trying to find some time away. Fortunately, this morning in time, I got a little time with myself to do some videos and different things like that. My issue really is trying to find time to alone. It's very hard to do that because you got people who sense your energy and it's very flattering to me, of course, and, and that's kind of kind of where it ends for me. But the idea is that people will be attracted to you and not only just for uh, intercourse and those type of things, but just because they feel you're an attractive type person and they want to be around that because they want some of that energy to actually kind of run off and actually come to them. And that's why we talk about things like energy suckers and vampire suckers and zombies, all these people walking around and you can see it. I see it every day walking around, basically saying, okay, I am totally drained. Now they don't say that, but they're non-verbally saying that and they can attribute that to anything else they want to attribute. But the bottom line to me is you can tell a person who's lost their energy. Now we talk about the fact that it could be physical energy. We talk about it could be emotional energy. We have different types of energy, of course, but the primary one is your physical energy. You can handle the emotional stuff if you keep your physical. It starts with the physical. And this is why we talk about when people are sleeping with multiple partners, when they're out there, you know, having all kinds of deviant behaviors, things they're doing and releasing all the time, they're becoming more and more in the idea that they're becoming more and more empty as a person. And as a person, they're becoming more and more empty. Other people sense that. And they don't want to be around that kind of person. 
But those people who have that high charisma, that idea, you could bet that they're probably on some sort of retention. Now, they may be not totally retention, maybe not monk mode, but they're probably on something in retention because you could see that, you could see the glow in them. You could see that that person's doing something. And obviously, there's some people out there who, you know, they just because of their religious values and things, they're not actually doing retention, but they're not, they're still celibate. They're not really go going out and having sex all the time, and maybe they've never had it. And they're also, by nature, just transmuting, and they look the same way. So there's a lot of things that happen with a person. It doesn't necessarily mean they have to be part of this club. They're doing it on their own, which is great. But the idea is that we're talking about here is the idea that you will attract things because you're magnet. Now, because of that, what happens is that like attracts like. Now, a magnet is connected to each other because they hit each other. So if I have metal and I have a magnet that's going to attract metal, boom, that's going to hit it. It's going to stick to it. Just like you, people will stick to you. In, in, in psychological ways, physical ways, they're not going to leave you because they love your energy. Now, they may not be able to say, they may say, well, you, you know, you look, you know, look handsome, you look pretty, you look, um, you know, you know, you have a good personality. This could be a lot of other reasons, but down deep, <clears throat> they may not even realize what they're attracted to is the actual the actual energy level that you have. And because of that, you basically are magnet, you're a magnet for other people. And the longer you're able to do this, the more opportunities you have. Now, when you look at the opportunities, we're talking about, well, when we talk about opportunities, what are we talking about here? We're talking about opportunities, not only in the uh, in romantic type world, which means you can have someone as a partner or you can find someone to marry, things like that. Or it could be something in the business world, which you're making connections and people want to be around you because they basically are attracted to that energy level. Or you're talking about actually spiritually when people are attracted to you in that level. And so basically, intellectually, physically, all of these things, you are attracting people to you for many, many reasons. And that's why we talk about this being so important for your success. So we talk about making money. There's gonna be a lot of opportunities to come your way because you're a magnet. You're gonna get a magnet and it happens that opportunities will come your way. A lot of times, you know, I have never, I haven't applied for a job in many, many years because people by word of mouth, different things, they see you, they talk with you and all of a sudden now, <clears throat> they see who you are and they get that feeling and they say, okay, we, I don't know how we feel this way, <clears throat> but we feel a certain way about this person. And now we're going to have that person together and maybe do more with this person, more opportunities. So the thing is that you're going to find lots of opportunities here because you are a person who has that magnet, magnetic personality, magnetism, they call it, right? What are we talking about? Well, a person's magnet, magnetizing other people towards them. And that's the key. So I like this idea that, that Alfonso is talking about. It's almost like you are attracting things to you because you're keeping your energy. Now, the Bible talks about this all the time and the fact that you will attract things to you, right? If you pray and you ask the Lord, the Lord will give it to you. Well, part of it is that I believe the Lord is within us and we keep all our nutrients, we keep things within us ourselves, we are going to talk more to the Lord. We're going to recognize that the Lord is with us. That to me is the key. I think the Lord is always in all of us, but I think we tend to be the ones that kind of block him out as time goes on because of these the sexual behaviors. And I think part of it is that we block out that relationship. Our soul becomes dark. Because of all these deviant behaviors, we get further away from recognizing God is within us. And we get further away, we get further towards the, the, uh, the evil one. But if you continue to be able to um, uh, save your energy, and you're able to keep your energy, and you're able to transmute that as much as possible, now you become closer recognizing that God is within you. 
and now you're able to to talk more about okay well, those godly things the spiritual things that are most important this is why it's important for us to recognize that the world around us is a different world we don't live in this world yes we're sitting here obviously physically living in the world but really mentally and spiritually we should be living in god's world we should be living in a different world we're not the world of the flesh and this is where we start moving away from all these fleshy things that we think are important. And I have seen a big difference in my life over the last four years, basically not needing all those things um, that I needed. And Monk Mode has helped me a great deal with that, realizing I don't need 99% of the things that I thought I needed, and especially the physical types of things, uh, from, from and, and the intimacy level as well. You basically are really kind of saying, okay, God, you're the person who's my savior. You're the person who is going to be helping me. And I have a relationship with you. You know, it's great that you provide things in my life with companionship and other things. But the bottom line really is my basic relationship is with you. And if you can do that with your creator and the closer you get, which is the reason I'm doing this after all these, these years, and I'll continue these because I think uh, what I have read and researched that basically looks like it takes about 10, 12 years to really kind of get closer to God. And so I'm assuming that the more you do this, the closer you open yourself up and you recognize that God is there. And then you attract all the abundant things because you have that God-like presence. That's what I think, in my opinion, probably will happen. It hasn't, you know, it hasn't totally happened, but I had 47 years of going back and forth. And so basically what you're talking about is that you're not going to have that presence inside of you until you've kind of wiped a lot of that away. And that takes years and sometimes it takes a whole lifetime until God says you're ready now to come up to, uh, <clears throat> to, to, to be with him. And um, at that point in time, you know, then you have a, more of a presence. So the thing is, is that you have to kind of think to yourself, okay, uh, why, are, why are humans in the situation we're in? Well, a lot of it is because we haven't really appreciated what God has given us. We're not grateful to what God has given us, and we have a temple. We have a temple. God is telling you, you're a temple of God. You're supposed to be a temple. Your body is the temple. Well, how do we treat our, our body? Well, we're not treating our body too well, right? We're basically kind of giving up energy all over the place, and for what reasons? And on top of that, we, uh, we have a lot of other addictions that we combine that with, Right, whether it's alcohol, whether it's drugs, or whether it's overeating, whatever it might be, <clears throat> we all have these vices, right, that we have to try to overcome. But the best way to overcome the vices and the best way to go ahead and, and kind of continue being that pure individual that you want, that godlike presence, and moving closer to that, I don't think anybody ever achieves that, except obviously Jesus, people like that. But the thing is, is that you can move closer to that by basically holding on to your energy and transmuting it. And this is the biggest challenge I think we have in this world. Because all the other things coming to self-esteem, egos, things like that, and character, confidence, success, those come from the fact that you can control yourself. If you've learned to be on the same page with your creator and you're controlling yourself, well, then you can actually then have, I believe, magnetizing power, magnetizing power to actually control things around you. And I think that's what ends up happening when, when you get to that level where now things are always coming to you. I think when you're fighting against uh, your creator and you're releasing, and you're doing all these things that are not good behaviors and you're creating a lot of sins all the time, you are moving away from your creator and the flow is away. The flow should actually be towards your creator so that by the time you finish up this existence on this in this world you're there you're ready to go and that and that's something that you know is my goal long term to try to do this by day by day by kind of getting away from all the things that i've done in the past that are, are not things that got me closer to god but those things move me away from god and i'm moving now trying to get closer to god little by little and it's not easy you know it takes time especially when you had a lot of bad years of moving away not realizing what you were doing and so and and sometimes not even really thinking that was that important 
All right, so anyway, great topic, Alfonso. I wanted to give you credit for that, my friend. And once again, thank you for all the shout outs. Remember, we're gonna go ahead and um, <clears throat> looking at uh, next Tuesday to do our um, live stream at six o'clock uh, Central Time. And hope you guys can visit with that. I'll try to do a few more before that, of course. And uh, I think uh, we'll do one uh, next time. Uh, matriculated had one talking about you don't need to be perfect during senior retention. So we'll talk about that next time. All right, until then, my friends. Have a great rest of your day. Uh, Midwest is a little hot today, but it uh, should be fine. Keep it up, my friends. Keep up and keep it on. Keep it on. All right, so two things. One, every day is a new day to a great warrior. And you guys are all great warriors. And number two, don't forget, we're always in a continued battle. So we have to say, always, give out the clearing call. Battle! All right, have a great day, guys. Take care.